factoring trinomials. Well, we discussed this topic in details where we said that if the leading coefficient is 1, then factoring trinomial is just finding product and sum of the constant term. So that the product is equals to the constant term and the sum is equal to the coefficient of the middle term, the coefficient of x. Now, that's a very simple way of doing it, but I found that students are having difficulty in finding those magic numbers which will give product as the constant and sum as the coefficient of the middle term. So, I thought it important to go through a technique which will help them do so. So, let me explain you this technique now. It is based on factorization itself, the basic factorization. Now, we'll go through problems one by one to make this point absolutely clear to you. Now, here, if I want to factor x squared minus x minus 72, I'm looking for two numbers, p and q, so that product of p and q is how much? Is 72 minus. And the sum is how much? Minus 1. This is what I'm looking for. Now, how to get these numbers? Well, this is not a very difficult number to deal with. 72, you know, is 8 times 9. And 8 times 9 is 72. So we got the two numbers, p and q. If the product is negative, that means one of them is positive and one of them is negative. The number which is greater should be negative because the sum is negative. Correct? Well, but this simple example will help me to show you the method. So, method of factoring. <laughs> so, we'll do factoring in factoring. See how. So, the number is 72. We want product of 72. So, let's, let's write 72 here and try to factor 72 itself. 72 can be divided by 2, so we get 2 times 36, right? Half of 72 is 36. And 36 can also be divided by 2, and we get 2 times half of this is 18. And 18 can be factored, and we get 2 times 9 as 18. Correct? While we are factoring, what we can do is, we can try to multiply these numbers together and see, do we get a magic number? Once we get it, we can stop there and get our answer. So here, we know if we multiply these numbers, we'll definitely get 72. Now the question is, what combination will give me the center number? We are looking for two numbers which are very close by, because their difference is only one and the bigger number is negative. So at this stage we see we have 2 times 2 times 2 as 8 and 9. So 8 and 9 has a difference of 1 and when you multiply you'll get 72. Correct? So we can write this as this. We can combine the numbers as this. So that is one number and this is the other number. And of course when I want negative as my sum this number should be negative and that number should be positive. Now, after doing this, we know the two magic numbers are negative 9 and 8, correct? So therefore, we can factor and we can write this is equal to x minus 9 times x plus 8. You understand the process? So this is how we kind of factor it. Let me show you with another set of trinomial. Here we have another equation x squared plus x minus 132. Now to factor this what we need? We need to split 132 now. So how to do that? We can do 132 and we will do prime factorization of 132. It is not very necessary to start with 2's. Well, you can. It makes things simpler. Let's start with 2's. 2 and half of this is 2 times 6 is 12. Right? And then we are left with 12. 66. And 6 can be written as 6 times 11, for example. Correct? Well, we kind of reach our magic number. We are looking for a difference of 1. And now, 
6 and 2 is 12 and we have a number 11. Their difference is 1. But this time the leading co the coefficient of x is plus 1. So the bigger number has to be positive. So this happens to be positive and this happens to be negative. Therefore, what do we get as our result? We get 6 times 2 is 12 which should be positive. So this is equal to x plus 12 times x minus 11. You can check your answer. If you add plus 12 and minus 11, you get the center term plus 1x, right? And when you multiply, you get minus 132 and x times x is x square. So do, do you get an idea? So like this, you can move forward. And 210, let's try this also. 210, let's do it this time. Let's not get into very small numbers. When the numbers are big, you can write bigger numbers. For example, here, I can factor this as 21 times 10. Correct? Now, 21 times 10, if I add them, I get 31. Right? I don't get minus 29. Well, we need to get minus here and plus here. That means I'm looking for two numbers and both numbers should be negative. When I multiply both negative numbers, I get positive and when I add them, I get a bigger negative number, which is expected here. So let's go further. So 21 can be split into 7 times 3. Correct? Now, 7 times 3 is 21 and this is 30 plus 7. It doesn't work right so let's split 10 again 10 can be written as 2 times 5 correct so now you can see a combination here if I do 2 and 7 I get 14 right 14 and the numbers left are 5 times 3 15 right 14 plus 15 is 29 if I take them both negative, right, in that case, I get minus 29. And that's how this factoring process helps me. So I can now write this as x minus 7 times 2 is 14, right, times x minus 3 times 5, 15. I hope you have started appreciating the whole process. It is a sure shot method to get the right answer. Otherwise, trying on calculator, finding out numbers may be very tedious. Now, let's go again. 96. So, help me this time. 96 will go with 4s. 4, let's divide by 4. Now, 4 times 2 is 8. 16. 4 times 4 is 24. Well, 24 and 4 makes it 28. Perfect. So, well, because they are factors, their product will always be 96. So you may get the number immediately. Now what should be the sign of these numbers? Of course, they should be negative, right? Because if they are negative, negative times negative is positive and when you add them up, you get negative 28. So we can factor this as x minus 4 times x minus 24. Perfect. So like this, we can move on. And here are two more questions which I think you can try on your own. Correct? Okay. Or should I try it? 52. Let's do it. So it's simpler now. Right? You can try with numbers. 52. Do you play cards? Cards have 52 cards. A set. And when you deal in 4 people, you get 13 each. So 4 times 13 is definitely one of the factors. And does it work for us? It does. When you multiply, you need a negative thing. That means one of them is positive and one should be negative. Which one should be positive? Well, here bigger number is negative. So bigger number is negative and smaller is positive. With, which gives us the result which is x plus 4 times x minus 13. Correct? Now, next one. So this time, you make combinations and let this be an exercise for you. Okay? Keep on doing factoring like this. You can go with big numbers or small numbers. Let's go with small numbers first. 2, right? 2 times 6 is 12 and 6 times 
2 times 3 is 6, 63. And 6 can be 7 times 9, right? So 7 times 9 is 63. Like this we can go on. Do we have a difference of 5? 7 times 4 is? No, 7 times 2 is 14. And 9. Yes, there is a difference of 5 here. Bigger number should be positive. 14 is positive. Do you see that? So this is my positive number and that's my negative number which will give me plus 5. Are you getting it? So that is how we will do it. Okay. Now, well this question is repeated here and you can try this question on your own. I hope you understand the process. Try doing some trinomials and practice this technique of factoring. It will help you a lot. I hope you appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.